Welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Tuesday, November 28th. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. Could your pet help you identify an illness? Some researchers think so. They're collecting results from animal tests to train artificial intelligence tools that could, in the near future, inform human diagnostics. Patients would be able to get medical test results within minutes or seconds for even the most complicated diagnoses. Here to tell us more about that is our pharmaceutical reporter, Jared Hopkins. Jared, start us off with which companies are using animal data to inform their AI development. So there's a startup out in Utah called TechSite, and they have both human health AI efforts as well as animal AI efforts. And working with an animal health drug company called Zoetis, they have a AI-based testing uh, device that's uh, called the VetScan Imagist. That performs AI-based fecal, urine, and other sorts of tests on animals. They are also working with the Mayo Clinic currently, and the Mayo Clinic does use their AI-based technology and their algorithms for parasite tests and processing their samples in the Mayo lab. Taking a step back, how does all of this technology even work? Basically, what Zoetis, which is an animal health drug company, and TechSite, they go throughout the world working with veterinarians and other testing companies or lab companies, and they collect something like 50,000 samples of animals, like fecal matter, for example. They, they digitize it all, and they are training the algorithm to sort of understand what is a parasite and what is not a parasite. What is a tapeworm? What is not a tapeworm? And that's the AI test. And it's, it's sort of then ready to go out into the real world and for real world use by veterinarians. Okay, so then how does that technology eventually make its way to helping diagnose humans? It's the underlying algorithm and the underlying AI technology that the companies take and tweak and that can be applied towards human testing to the idea that there's not that much of a major difference between a human fecal sample and an animal fecal sample. The companies are also working for human health. They're working on cancer detection, which is basically a a different type of test, and it sort of builds off of using human tissue samples and analyzing these samples, digitizing them, but ultimately trying to train an algorithm that can answer the question of whether or not somebody has cancer or does not have cancer. Yeah. Tell us some more about that tissue-based cancer test. So TechSite is working with the Mayo Clinic to sort of create a digital pathology program And so the Mayo Clinic is working to digitize 25 million tissue samples that it's collected over the years. And then TechSite works to use these images to train its algorithms. Mayo says that they're working on this right now, and they say that they should have something available for use in care, even if on a limited basis, next year. And there's a couple sort of advantages that they point to here. So one, The human, the doctor, the pathologist still plays a role after an AI-based tissue or cancer test would be done. The idea, though, is that a doctor or a pathologist has a second opinion sort of ready to go right by their fingertips. And it's not just a second opinion like another human being. It's an AI-based second opinion that it itself is based on thousands or millions of samples. And then the second advantage that they point to is the idea that if a patient is not being seen by a doctor in a academic medical center, if they're out in maybe a more rural part or being seen by a community oncologist, that those doctors then can use these digital tools to help them in caring or diagnosing for patients. All right. So two upsides to this. Are there any downsides to this tech? One big difference is that in the animal tests, when the vets get their results, it's basically a diagnosis. So the AI provides a diagnosis. In the human tests, right now, even though the AI delivers the results 
to the Mayo Clinic on these parasite tests, they have a human confirm it. A human checks off the box. It's not directly determined by the AI. And so the human component is still important here. We're not like jumping to AI diagnosing whether or not, you know, we have cancer or not tomorrow. And there's a question of cost. The advocates of these things say that this will help defray the cost of cancer care and the healthcare system and stuff like that. But some of these tools might be expensive for health systems to afford. I did ask these companies about privacy concerns, and they say that all the human samples that they're digitizing, for example, the Mayo Clinic, that it's de-identified. That was our pharmaceuticals reporter, Jared Hopkins. And that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Anthony Bancy with supervising producer Melanie Roy. I'm Julie Chang for The Wall Street Journal. We'll be back tomorrow. Thanks for listening.